Welcome to worship here at Christ United Methodist Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. My name is Richard Randolph and I'm honored and privileged to serve as the senior pastor uh, here at Christ United. Our community of faith strives to be an open, welcoming and affirming congregation. We believe that all of us are created in the image of God and that God loves us just the way we are that God seeks to be in a loving relationship with us. So we uh, welcome everyone, regardless of uh, your socioeconomic class or your political perspective or your sexual orientation or your economic class or your race or any other uh, thing that uh, makes you the individual that you are. We are glad that you're here and we hope that as you worship with us, you will experience the presence of Christ in your heart and in your mind. Good morning, I'm Kim Garrison, the program director here at Christ United. We are so blessed and so grateful for the support that we get. And if you'd like to continue your support, or if you're new to our Facebook page and our worship and you'd like to support our church and our missions, you can do so by going to our website and going to the push pay button, or you can certainly send a check to the address that you see on your screen. Uh, several announcements we'd like to uh, lift up before we begin our service of worship. First, um, just a reminder that uh, today, Sunday, March 7th at uh, 3 p.m., uh, the Nebraska Brass will be offering a free concert online. It'll be streamed uh, live on our Christ UMC Facebook page. We hope that you'll take advantage of this uh, great opportunity to enjoy some wonderful music. Also, the UMW, our United Methodist Women, they are counting on your support. They want, uh, they're currently doing an Easter fundraiser, and that is to raise money for missions and for other projects. 
and they are needing your help. So if you would like to call one of the three people that you see on your screen, you can buy tickets for a fabulous basket that they are auctioning off, and, uh, or raffling off, I should say. So if you want to buy a ticket, they're $250 each, or you can buy ten, five for $10. And again, just call one of the ladies that you see on your screen. Also, reminder that we are celebrating communion today, so this will be the time that you go and get your elements to celebrate with us. And uh, finally, a reminder about uh, the, the Bible study class that I am uh, leading on Tuesdays uh, at 6.30 p.m. Uh, the, the class is uh, online uh, via Zoom, and the information about how to Join the class, I think, is available on the screen in front of you. Thank you. Lent is a 40-day period of spiritual preparation before Easter and our celebration of Christ's resurrection. A central part of this spiritual preparation is seeking forgiveness for our sins and shortcomings. Will you join with us in this time of confession as we offer up Prayers of Confession. O oh, loving God, we confess that just as the Apostle Paul, we do not do the good which we want, but instead we commit the evil which we do not want. Forgive us, O oh merciful God. We have left undone things that needed to be done. We have left unsaid things that needed to be said. On the other hand, we have done things that needed to be left undone, and we have said things which needed to be left unsaid. Again, we ask for your forgiveness, O gracious and loving God. And now will you please join us in a time of silence as we lift up our own individual sins and shortcomings. hear these words of assurance. Rejoice and be glad. Because of God's love, we are all forgiven and reconciled. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.
Please hear these words as I read them from the book of Romans, chapter 7, verses 15 through 25. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but the sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but the sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells within my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind, I am a slave to the law of God. But with my flesh, I am a slave to the law of sin. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our focus this week is on internal conflict. Those times when we mentally struggle with some important decision or when we face a temptation. Right now, I'm in the midst of a major internal conflict. I am conflicted as we try to decide whether it's time for us to resume in-person worship here at the church. On the one hand, I would really like to resume in-person worship. I really miss seeing everyone face to face. I miss those times before and after the services when we gather for uh, coffee and conversation in the Great Hall. On this one hand, I have talked with our local health officials, and they have indicated that it's probably safe to resume in-person worship, especially for those who have been vaccinated. And yet on the other hand, national health leaders such as Dr. Fauci and the new CDC director, Dr. Rochelle uh, Walensky, have been adamant that we need to continue being vigilant in our efforts to fight the coronavirus disease. They argue, argue for continued self-isolation and following safety practices such as staying home, wearing our mask, and staying over six feet apart from one another. They argue that we are so very close to finally breaking the coronavirus that we need to be extra vigilant so that we don't fall back in our fight. On this other hand, I also worry about those families who will be some of the last to be vaccinated against the coronavirus. I wonder whether it's ethical to open up our church for in-person worship when we know that some members of our faith community who would love to return to worship cannot because they have not received the vaccine yet. Is it fair and just for us as a faith community to hold worship services when we know that some people should not be attending because of the coronavirus? I am really conflicted about this huge decision which impacts our community of faith. This is part of what we mean when we talk about an internal conflict going on within our heads and our hearts. It's those decisions which can deeply divide us as persons, as individuals. Frequently, these decisions are life-changing decisions. For instance, one of these internal conflict decisions uh, in which I was the most conflicted 
was a decision about whether or not to accept a new job offer and to move halfway across the country. Now, in our scripture today, the Apostle Paul is talking about a different type of internal conflict. This scripture is very deep and very complex. It provides the culmination and summary conclusion for a line of reasoning which the Apostle Paul has been developing since way back in the fifth chapter of his letter to the Romans. In preparation for today, I studied three different commentaries on this passage. And amazingly, each of the biblical scholars had a different theory of interpretation for Romans 7, 15 through 25. So this passage is very difficult to understand. And yet, I think that the key to understanding the apostles' claim comes in verse 19. There Paul writes, For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. We've all had that experience, haven't we? We try to do what's good and right, what God expects from us, but instead of doing the good, we end up doing the bad instead. That's certainly happened in my life. Just as the Apostle Paul, I do not know the good which I, I do not do the good which I want, but instead the evil, which is what I'm trying to avoid, is what I end up doing. Again, I think almost all of us have had this experience at some point in our lives. This past Tuesday in my Bible study class, we were looking at Paul's observation, and I asked the class if they could re recall examples from their own lives when they did something wrong. When all along there was this voice in the back of their heads telling them not to do it. Imagine, I said, that it was like in those cartoons where the, the character in the cartoon has the little devil on the one shoulder and the little angel on the other shoulder. And, and the angel is telling the character, you know, you should not do this thing that you are thinking about. You should not doing, do this thing that you're contemplating where is the devil saying, no, go ahead and do it. You'll enjoy it. It'll be fun. You won't get into trouble, and it'll, you'll really enjoy it and have fun. So imagining an angel on our one shoulder and a devil on the other. Well, we heard some great stories during our Tuesday Bible study from different members of the class. Mary Schroeder told one of the best stories. I'd like for you to listen to her story now. When I was in high school, I had uh, probably a sophomore, told my mother I was going to the movies. So I was headed to the movies and uh, I come and call a load of my friends. Come on, Mary, let's go. No, I, I can't, I gotta go to the movies. I'm going to the movies. I'm, I, I, oh, I'm going with you guys. No, I gotta go to the movies. Well, I got in with my friends. And every time I thought, I should be at the movies. Oh, but you guys are too much fun. I've been with you before. I know I'm going to have fun. I know. So on we go. No, I got to be at the movies. Nope, 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 nope. I'm here. We're going to have fun. <laughs> As we were driving along, we hit a ramp, threw that car, flew it, rolled it, head over head. Six of us ended up in the front seat of a two-door 57 Ford. As we landed on our hood, we were all able to get out of that car and it started on fire. And I said, I need to be at the movies. This isn't where I should be at, but I'm here. I, I have, oh, I'm, I mean, I gotta be at the movies. But you know, um, I wasn't at the movies. <laughs> so. As I, uh, 
there was another car fortunately behind us and they took us all to the emergency rooms and fortunately no no one had any major injuries but when my mother picked me up i had to explain to her where i was at and why and as i was on house arrest then with hard labor which seemed like years <laughs> i finally got released and i did go to the movies and as i looked back that night two rows behind me my mother was sitting watching me <laughs> to make sure that the movies I have to tell you it took a long time to build that trust back up with her. But after that incident, you know, they brought that 57 to 4 totaled into the high school driveway area and that was a eye opener. I really should have been at the movies, but I was out with fun and friends and it could have been a great time. Yeah. And it was fortunate. No one was hurt. Yeah. But could have been at the movies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just love that story. Uh, I am so glad that you and everyone was okay, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. You guys were really lucky, mm -hmm. really lucky in, in retrospect. And uh, I can, yeah. um, I can just imagine you making that phone call to mom from the emergency room. Uh, that had to be one of the hardest things you ever did. I could not convince anyone to do it for me either. Yeah. I, well, <laughs> you, it, it was on you. You needed to make the call. But I, I can also put myself in the shoes of your mom. Um, that must have been just a terrifying phone call. Mm -hmm. So she thought you were at the movies. <laughs> I wish I would have been. Yeah. But I, you know, peer pressure is a real strong thing. And to be with your friends is really important when you're in high school. Absolutely. You know, and I don't remember what the movies was, but I sure remember having fun with my friends previously and, and after that incident too. Yeah. But, it was fortunate and I'm very thankful that no one was injured and that I did survive that incident. And when I say I'm going to the movies, I'm going to the movies. <laughs> Lesson learned. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Mary, for sharing uh, this story with, uh, with me and with our, our Bible study group and, and now with uh, the uh, the congregation on Sunday morning. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. I think we've all had an experience like Mary's, where um, we really wanted to do something, but we had this voice in the back of our head say saying, "Go to the movies. Go to the movies. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Go to the movies." Or We've had the opposite thing happen to us when we intended to do something good for someone, but we ended up not getting it done for some reason. I had a parishioner once who told me about uh, needing to go to the courthouse um, or an office building, I, f I forget which, to um, take care of some business. And he told me that um, as he walked into the, the front, the entrance of the building, there was... Um, there was a vagrant, uh, a homeless man, lying on the, the bench outside in front of the building. And, and the, the homeless person said to him, he said, please, sir, can you, can you spare some change for breakfast? I'm, I'm hungry. I haven't eaten in over a day. And uh, my parishioner just uh, ignored him, and he, he walked into the building to take care of his business. And as he was going about his business, he kept thinking to himself, you know, I've got plenty of money. I've got money in my pocket right now. It wouldn't harm me to, to give some money to this homeless person out on the bench in front of the building. It wouldn't hurt me to buy him breakfast, and it would be a great benefit for him. And so he thought, when I get through with my business, then I'm going to find him 
and give him some money for breakfast. Maybe I'll even take him to McDonald's and eat with him. So when his business was completed, he walked out of the building, and then when he went down the steps and he looked, the bench was empty. The homeless person had moved on, and he never had the chance to provide this man with the breakfast that that he really wanted to give to him. Sometimes we can intend to do something which is the good, but end, uh, end up not getting it done, end up doing the bad. Paul provides a very astute insight into the human condition at the conclusion of his pass of this passage of scripture. Do you remember what he says? He says, Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Think, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Who will rescue me? Thanks be to God. It's Jesus Christ our Lord. Who will save us from our finitude and our propensity to sin? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, whose love for us is literally beyond our comprehension. Jesus Christ, whose love for us knows no bounds. We are loved beyond our wildest imaginations. Think about that. That's the good news of the gospel. Always, but especially during the season of Lent, as we reflect and remember the many ways in which we have sinned and fallen short, the good news is always there for us. God's love for us knows no bounds. No matter how often we do not do the good that we want, but instead do the evil which we are trying to avoid. Regardless of how many times that happens, when we are truly repentant, God still forgives us, and God always deeply loves us. Amen. Will you join me in an attitude of prayer as I lift up a prayer this morning on behalf of our whole faith community? Let us pray. 
O loving and generous God, as we worship across space and time this week, our worship is filled with joy and gratitude for all of the blessings which we have received. This week, we are delighted and grateful for the good news about the COVID vaccines and the promise that all adults may be vaccinated by the end of May. We are excited as our public health officials slowly help to bring this wicked coronavirus under control. And we look forward to the eventual return to normality. We're also grateful for the progress that has been made towards additional financial relief for all of those who have suffered so much financially from the coronavirus. At the same time, O oh gracious God, this continues to be an anxious, fearful, dark, and uncertain time. We continue to remain fearful of the coronavirus. Its power threatens us and our loved ones. And also there is the threat of a new surge of cases. We would also lift up all of those who are struggling financially due to the threat of lost jobs or lost work hours. Our anxiety concerning the racism and polarization that has divided our country remains. And so we lift up these concerns. We pray for members of our faith community as well as others who struggle with health concerns. We remember especially everyone fighting against the coronavirus or cancer or the flu. And we also lift up those struggling with rehabilitation necessitated by surgery or injury or any other cause. We also lift up all of those who are struggling with isolation or loneliness or depression during this difficult time. O oh God of healing, we pray that you will bestow the gift of healing in whatever form is most appropriate for all of these whom we have lifted up, from those who are struggling with physical illness to those who are working so hard in rehabilitation to those who are struggling with isolation and depression. We pray for those who are struggling financially and finally, we pray for healing for our country, which is so badly torn and bleeding. We pray that you'll show ways in which we, as followers of Christ, may be agents of healing for the, the deep wounds in our communities and in our country. All of this we lift up in the name of Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. As we come now to the time in which we will celebrate the sacrament of our Lord's Supper, I'd like to pause for a moment and allow you to have a chance, if you haven't done so already, to get the elements uh, for the sacrament, uh, perhaps bread and uh, grape juice or uh, wine, uh, or if you've already gotten the individual communion cups from the church, uh, I ask that you get your elements and bring them and put them um, in front of you or beside you so that you have ready access to uh, the elements as we celebrate the sacrament. As you're getting these elements, um, let me just remind you that uh, here in the United Methodist Church, we uh, celebrate an, an open table, which means that everyone is welcome to come and share this blessed sacrament with us. You do not have to be a member of Christ United Methodist Church or the United Methodist denomination or indeed any church. All that is required is that you simply seek in your heart to follow in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to live your life in such a way that it reflects Jesus' life and his teachings. I also want to remind you that uh, when we come to that time in which we will receive the elements 
um, of the sacrament when we receive the bread. Then we will pause for a few moments before um, receiving it so that everybody can receive it together at the same time. And likewise, when it is time to receive the, the juice or the, the wine, whichever you have gotten, <clears throat> we will pause for a few moments so that everybody is ready and we can receive uh, that as well at the same time to signify and to remind ourselves that even though we are separated by distance and by time, we're still one united community of faith, united by the love of Jesus Christ and our shared desire to grow closer to Jesus, to act inclusively to serve others, and to do justice. Will you join me now as we celebrate this sacrament? Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You brought forth all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away, and our love failed. Your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for forty days and forty nights, you bore up the ark upon the waters and saved Noah along with his family. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for forty days and forty nights, you gave us your commandments and made us your covenant people. And when your people forsook your covenant, your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights on your holy mountain, where he heard your still, small voice. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sin, your Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness, where he fasted for forty days and forty nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died upon a cross for our sin, you raised him to life, presented him alive to the apostles during forty days, and exalted him, at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and to death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now, when we, your people, prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance for sin and the cleansing of our hearts, that during these 40 days of Lent, we may be gifted and graced to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Jesus Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you. Broke the bread and shared it with his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. When the supper was over, he took the cup. 
again he gave thanks to you. And then he shared it with all of the, of the disciples, saying, Take, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here, and upon these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us receive together the sacrament of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you have the individual communion cup at this time, I invite you to tear the first layer of cellophane off and to get the wafer and hold it in your hand. If you have bread, then I encourage you to take a piece of the bread uh, and hold it in your hand. And let us wait until we're certain that everybody is ready to receive the sacrament. And now, remembering our unity in Jesus Christ, let us receive the sacrament together. Now, if you have the communion cup, if you'll remove the second layer of cellophane, being careful not to spill the juice. Or if you're using juice or wine from your home, if you'll take the cup. Again, let us wait for a moment to make sure that we are all receiving together. receive the sacrament. And now will you bow your heads 
in an attitude of prayer and reverence as I lift up this prayer after receiving. O God of infinite mystery, we give thanks for this holy sacrament of the Lord's Supper, which points ahead to that perfect future when we will feast with the Lord Jesus Christ himself and all of his followers at your blessed table. We also give thanks for your love and forgiveness, especially your forgiveness for those times when, just as the Apostle Paul, we do not do the good which we want, but instead do the evil which we do not intend to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Please join me in this final benediction. Dear Lord, we know we are filled with good and evil. And as your followers, we strive to be more like the example of Jesus, as he taught us. But we fail. And as we fight against injustice, as we welcome all with love, and we find new ways and opportunities to serve those around us, we know that you see the good and you forgive our evil. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>